everyone, and welcome to another episode of Los Panos Talk. My name is Justin Collins. Tonight, we're going to talk about the splash pad. Yes, that's right. The city looks like it's going to move forward with getting a splash pad. I'm going to tell you where it's going to be, what it's going to look like, the timeline of when it might open, what our city council members said about it, and the various things that went into consideration. I'll give you all that information in just a moment, right after a brief message from our sponsor. Thanks for watching. So your first question might be, well, what is a splash pad? Well, a splash pad is essentially an aquatic facility, right? Like an outdoor aquatic park, but it's considered zero feet entry. And what that essentially means is it's not a pool. It's enjoyed by young kids and middle-aged kids, et cetera, alike. Here's a couple pictures of splash pads to give you an idea of what a splash pad is and what they generally look like. Now, there's a couple things about splash pads that are interesting. One of which is that because they're zero feet, they don't require a lifeguard on duty. But under California law, splash pads are relatively new. And so most of the regulations actually come from pools. And as a result, there are many requirements for splash pads, some of which might not seem entirely intuitive. So some of those requirements are going to guide what the splash pad is going to essentially look like. And that was brought up in the presentation. So for instance, the law requires that splash pads have shower heads. So in other words, a, a shower facility, how many heads they're required to have is determined by how large it is and how many people it's expected to service. There has to be a restroom within 300 feet of the location. There's requirements regarding um, pump types hose bibs, et cetera. And generally, because of water conservation needs, these use a self-contained recirculating type system. Some other things that were brought up as, as things that definitely need to be considered um, and were talked about at the meeting was the need for fencing around the splash pad in order to protect it from vandalism, timer and lock systems, the need for shade gazebos and ample public parking. Now, two items that came up because they were in popular demand by local citizenry in surveys and at these various meetings was a large bucket type or large spilling bucket type thing, which if you're unfamiliar with that or you haven't gone to a theme park with it, essentially it's like a giant bucket, right? That's like filling up with water. It takes a while, you know, maybe a couple of minutes or so. And then it just dumps over and then all the kids underneath it just get absolutely soaked. So it's a pretty fun thing, but that's that was something that was specifically asked for. And then shade gazebos, uh, in order to rent out for like private parties, like birthday parties, et cetera. So the splash pad would not be exclusive to those people, but 
the individual gazebo could be exclusive to the party. So the Parks and Rec Division took these things in mind when they made their various sketches and concepts. Again, these are rough drafts and these are just kind of first presentations. It still could definitely change. And after the meeting, it sounds like they actually wanna go a little bigger, a little better than what was even shown in the sketch. Another thing that was brought up was that splash pads usually have some kind of theme. Uh, whether it be like trees, forest, um, the ocean, there's all kinds of various themes and there wasn't a theme that was presented here, but obviously it sounds like they would probably have to try to come up with some sort of theme. That is yet to be determined. What they did essentially decide to do at this meeting was to at least move forward and decide it on a location. Now in the presentation, they essentially found three locations that they found to be feasible that would meet all the various requirements and would have the land size to work with. And those locations were Ranchwood Park, the Ag Sports Complex, and then Pacheco Park. You'll get to hear in a moment from the city council members themselves as to why they favored Pacheco Park. So now I'm going to show you some of the screenshots that I've taken from the various sketches that were created so you could see what the different plausible parks were and then I'll show you which one was ultimately more or less decided on. Now, essentially what you're looking at here is a rough sketch idea of what it would look like if they were to try to install the splash pad at the Ag Sports Complex. Things that were mentioned if they were to go with this design is that the um, restroom here would have to be altered and renovated. It has to apparently be altered and renovated regardless of whether a splash pad is put in or not but it's not up to standard at this moment anyway. And it, the question was, is would this also double or triple as concession and a pump house? Then they also talked about regrading the baseball fields, et cetera, and making other improvements if they were to choose this location. But this is a rough sketch of what this would generally look like. Now we move to Ranchwood. So in the Ranchwood section, what we see here is, this is basically where it would be at. You can see here on the right hand side, it's showing Stonewood Drive and below Driftwood Avenue. So if you could imagine at that intersection, that's where this would be. This would be a sidewalk that essentially would be created. These structures here that you're seeing that kind of look like trees aren't trees, they're actually shade structures. Um, you're gonna see these in really all of the different designs and sketches. The reason why they would rather not use trees was explain that trees shed leaves and that these leaves get into the splash pad and the pump system. It's not the end of the world, but it does add to maintenance costs. And as a result, it seems more feasible to actually go with some kind of artificial structure like a gazebo or giant umbrella or something to that effect. So there would be the pump house, landscaping and fencing, sidewalks leading into it. But again, one of the main concerns with this was about the impact of the local residents and the parking. This is Ranchwood area again, but option B. Once again, you can see the shading structures. Again, this time it's now going at a different angle, basically coming from the opposite side, but the same thing, Stonewood Drive and Driftwood here. So it's essentially the same location, but just slightly different orientation of the design. It's still a circular design with hedging and fencing enclosing the area and sidewalks leading up to it. Now, ultimately, and you'll see here in a moment, the city council decided to go with the Pacheco location as the primary location to start. This was one of the sketches presented. There's two and I'll show you both. Um, this sketch, and I'll explain a few things here. At the top left corner, you see the future playground. So this was talked about as more of something really in the, in the future after the splash pad. So this is something that would, would happen later on, but it was conceived to be part of the project overall. You can see here, if you look here on the top part of it, that's Pacheco Boulevard. Here at the bottom is Washington Avenue. This building here in the bottom right corner is the Millican Museum. So if that gives you an idea of where we're talking about and where we're at. It would include a half court basketball field, 
pickleball, there'd be a restroom pump house, shade structures for renting for parties, additional parking, et cetera. So this is a, a very large undertaking if they were to go with this particular design. There was a couple reasons that they liked this location and I'll let you just hear what their words were. So once again, what we're looking at here is another version of basically the same plan more or less, but slightly different orientation. You see there's more parking up here in front when you come off Pacheco. They're not showing the uh, optional um, future playground here. Instead, the future playground is moved down here. Another here. Half court is shifted in direction. The shades are lined up. And then pickleball, I guess, would be in a in a more distant off to the side, another part of the park and a different project entirely. And you can see for orientation purposes, the museum is down here. So this was option B. Now, one of the ways, one of the ways that largely this is being funded is that they're submitting for actually a state grant. And this grant is for over $8 million and the plan is to have it submitted by April 7th for the city council to look over. <clears throat> and it will be presented once again by Parks and Recs Director Joe Heim. I just basically summarized the presentation for you. It was a bit longer than that, but more or less that was what was said. Now we're gonna get into the questions and answers. This is the part where the city council essentially asked questions about these ideas, gave their opinions on it, and then Parks and Recs Director Joe Heim answered the questions. And so to avoid putting words in their mouth, we're just gonna to cut to the clip. So let's take a watch. We we'll go to questions to council in just a second, but before we do, just one thing I wanna say is I, I, I don't like the ad complex as a location because children have a difficult time walking, skateboarding or bicycling there. Um, and uh, the other two locations are, are accessible for, for children in, in, in those three means of transportation, which they commonly use. Uh, so uh, now we'll go ahead and go to council for questions, comments, uh, Mr. Jones. Yes, Mayor. Um, so if we're gonna do the splash pad, all I request is that we go big on it. We make it the coolest splash pad uh, that we can imagine just because it's going to be probably quite a few more years down the road before we do a pool. So I don't want to go half ass on a splash pad. I want to go big. I want to have all the bills and whistles. Um, I want other towns to be envious of our splash pad. So that's where I stand on that. Thank you, Mr. Jones. Uh, I agree. Mr. Lambert. Hi. Yes, I, of course, I'm with you with uh, the ag complex, uh, you know, thinking about how they're going to get there along the side of the highway. Uh, I myself, I'm thinking Pacheco Park uh, with the second picture, but is there going to be an age group? Um, uh, is it just going to be mainly just towards small children? Because I know there's junior high kids, you know, that we need to look out for also for this area or for something like this. Uh, so a lot of times, uh, uh, splash pads have different areas uh, within them uh, geared at different ages. So you might see an area um, that has, uh, like some of those pictures had shown, of uh, uh, kind of gentler uh, spraying systems for younger ages, toddlers, things like that. Um, and then as you get up to that bucket eight, that, that those the big spilling buckets that you might see at, at other park locations that are kind of essential uh, amenity. Um, typically, they, I think they think they're probably graded for ages five to twelve, but you do see a lot of you know 13, 14, 15 year olds that of course love to get dumped on as well. Um, but that's kind of it's a lot of times splash pads kind of have different zones that are kind of geared for different age groups, um, so that you know. Uh, Todd, there's not, you know, getting dumped on by a lot of, a lot of water um, and older kids at the same time are able to have uh, a funner experience, more interactive experience. Uh, thank you. And I'm, I'm kind of uh, like uh, Council Member uh, Jones. Uh, if, if we're going to do it, let's do it right. Uh, make it worth a while. Appreciate it, Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Lambert. Ms. Lewis? Uh, yes. <clears throat> and uh, 
question, Joe, uh, on the toddler splash, splash pad area that, you know, we're looking at different age groups and I would hope that maybe we would include something, uh, you know, for our junior high, high school, because they're going to want to get out there also and have some fun uh, since we're not looking at a swimming pool anytime in the near future. So that, that may mean that we have to do three different phases uh, possibly for the splash pad. But um, in the toddler area, for the small ones, uh, sometimes you're gonna have parents that may be concerned about their children, you know, being out there experiencing it right away. Uh, will, will a parent be allowed to be in there with their toddler to help them get used to being in a splash pad area? Um, typically, yes, that's, that is something that's allowed. Um, uh, I, don't, I don't think you see it too commonly, but usually mom wants to sit back and, <laughs> and relax, but uh, to kind of help that comfort level, yes, that would be. Um, and kind of to touch on the different age groups again, um, as we get into the design process, uh, um, that's something that we can certainly uh, work into uh, the design of the splash pad is um, gearing it at multiple age groups. Yes. Okay. And uh, in regards to my opinion about location, uh, naturally, Pacheco for me, with all the reasons that you mentioned, because it's centrally located, um, uh, people going uh, down Pacheco, which is probably just about every citizen in our town will be able to see it and know it's there. Um, Ranchwood, the, the impact on the community as far as parking and such. Um, would be a concern of mine. And something that wasn't mentioned for the export area, even though we have the, the bottle dump area that the city owns um, and our dog park is out there when the uh, sports ag was active uh, with baseball being used. The thing that we, we have another portion of what's being active out there is farming. And when you have spraying and um, uh, uh, tractors that may be accessing and dirt flying. Uh, those are things that will end up in your filter and can cause, uh, I would assume, more damage than normal if you're not near uh, agriculture like that. So that, that would be a concern of, of, for me putting it out at the sports ag complex is uh, it's just too close to agriculture out there for the for the time being. And the dog park is out there, but it's grass. And so that's not a big issue. Uh, so that that's kind of my take on it. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Ms. Lewis. Mr. Gomez. <clears throat> yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, just have a couple questions. Uh, first of all, I see the enthusiasm in you regarding this project, and that's good. Uh, I think it's gonna add to the quality of life and it's gonna add to our character here in the city, much needed. However, what's the life cycle of these uh, splash pads? And also in consideration of uh, hard water, it tends to go through uh, fixtures pretty readily. Uh, do we have something that's gonna mitigate that or, or, or have we studied that? So regarding hard water, that's that's something that would, would come out of the design process. Um, it is something that's obviously come up in other communities. Uh, the designer that I was talking to from UK, he did uh, five out of the seven Fresno uh, splash pads. And uh, something that he had mentioned was mitigating that issue. Um, so that's something that we would deal with um, probably in the design phase there. And then, you know, I, I, you know, I, I obviously agree with, with you all as far as uh, the, um, value that this would add to the community and uh, self-esteem and, and everything with with adding something like this. Um, could you repeat the other question? I'm, I'm, I apologize. The, the lifespan on these, the life cycle of, of these types of facilities and the maintenance okay. costs. Sorry about that. So yeah, life, the lifespan of them, um, they typically uh, last at least 20 years, uh, if not longer. Uh, you have splash pad, and one of the splash pads we visited in Fresno was, I think it was constructed about 2002, um, and it's still running um, very well, uh, strong. Um, uh, um, they, like that facility, it was, uh, there was uh, some upgrade that they needed to make to the pool house, the, the, the 
there's now a requirement for a roof on top of the pool house they had to make, but otherwise um, there, there was minimal uh, motor early um, uh, improvements needed. Um, there is an operational cost that I mentioned during the presentation in terms of annual maintenance, chemicals, things like that that need to be um, uh, put into the, the facility. Uh, but in terms of lifespan, um, uh, you know, splash pads are newer. They started really getting installed in about the early 2000s um, in parks. Uh, you mostly saw them more in like uh, memorial type of uh, uh, parks before that in the 90s where you'd see it just water shooting out of the ground kids kind of running through it so they got really popular in the 2000s and, and obviously to the to this day um, so a lot of splash pads are starting to near that age of 20 plus years so um, but that's that's my understanding is that uh, from my discussions with QK and my experience with with other cities uh, they have not had issues so Perfect. Thank you very much for that. As far as the concerns, I mirror most of the other council members and mayor's concerns. Uh, so uh, thank you. Look forward to this project going forward. Thank you. Thank you very much. <clears throat> so the decision then is the location. Uh, so far, a specific location, I think the only uh, one we've had mentioned, uh, Ms. Lewis. Um, and I'll just go and do a quick round robin to see uh, how everybody feels about that location for Pacheco, uh, Pacheco Park, um, and, and see if that if that is the council consensus. Mr. Jones? Yes, I do think maybe we should think of an alternative just in case if for some reason under engineering or planning, it doesn't work out at that part. So something to kind of keep in the back of your heads is mine. So I do like Pacheco Park as the primary because it's accessible, but we probably need to think of a backup. Okay. Uh, would you rec would you recommend the ranch? What is the backup? Uh, it's so far on the north side. Um, I don't know. I don't know if I like the other two locations. Period. So oh, mm -hmm. I don't oh, know. Maybe, at, and, it, so you would want to maybe look at another an, another uh, another location completely if Pacheco didn't work out. Yes. So I mean, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. So. All right, uh, Mr. Lambert. Yeah, I'm same here with Pacheco. Okay. Uh, very good. All right. And uh, Mr. Yamas, does Pacheco Park sound like your number one as well? Yes, sir. Okay. So, uh, Chair, I'll entertain a motion to uh, direct staff to pursue the Pacheco Park location. Uh, who would like to make that motion? Mr. Mayor. Go, go ahead. ahead. Go ahead. You can go, Mr. Lambert. I'd like to make the motion that we uh, uh, select the Pacheco Park as our primary. Thank you, Mr. Lambert. Uh, Ms. Lewis? I'll second. I'll second the motion. Thank you. So we have a motion from uh, Council Member Lambert and a second from Mayor Port Tim Lewis to direct staff to pursue the Pacheco Park location for the splash pad. Uh, roll call vote, Ms. Maloney, please. Jones? Yes. Lambert? Yes. Lewis? Yes. Yamas? Yes. Faria? Yes. Motion carried unanimously. Thank you for bringing this, this project to fruition. Uh, someday, someday, the next big project, a pool, but a pool is going to have to be a joint project, I believe between more requiring a little more support than just the city. Right now, the city, we're able to do the splash pad. Let's do the splash pad. And this is this is very exciting. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, uh, thank you Mr. Heim. Thank you, everybody. So there you have it, folks. As you can see, members of the council, particularly uh, Mayor Tom Faria and Parks and Recs Director uh, Joe Heim are all very excited about doing this splash pad, about bringing this to our city. This is going to be a rather large undertaking. And so the next question you're probably going to ask is, well, when, what time, uh, what would be the timeline for it to come out? And that was also brought up at the meeting. And so I took a screenshot of the slide here, but he also talked over this slide. And basically what he said was, is that 
spring of 2021, which is basically right now, more or less, is, is the design phase and the seeking funding phase. They would be seeking funding for fiscal year 2021-2022, which is the next or the upcoming fiscal year. On here, he put construction um, for winter 2021, but he made it sound like could be late fall 2021, could be early spring 2021, could be late winter 2022. So it, it's more of a ballpark estimate. But he also put that it was going to open on spring of 2022. But when he was speaking, he made it seem more like the plan is to basically open by summer of 2022. So in other words, not this summer, but next summer, you might just be able to take your family down to the splash pad at Pacheco Park. If you haven't already, please like, follow, subscribe to Los Banos Talk. We have Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Twitter, and of course, LosBanosTalk.com. You can become a supporter of Los Banos Talk and receive all the episodes first and without the ads. Plus, get access to exclusive behind-the-scenes bonus content and become a member of the exclusive group Los Banos Talk Nation. Once again, my name is Justin Collins, and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day.